All right, so in the last video, we introduced the squeeze theorem. And we mentioned that, you know, it's a technical result. Um, a lot of students find it difficult to apply if they're just sort of thrown into a problem and just asked to show, you know, that a limit has a particular value using the squeeze theorem. Uh, this can be a little bit tricky. But as I said, uh, the main reason that we introduced the squeeze theorem in, in a first calculus course is to allow us to establish some facts that give us limit information about trig functions. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at this diagram here. And we're going to use it to convince ourselves of this fact. That for absolute value of x less than or equal to 1, the absolute value of sine x is always less than or equal to the absolute value of x. Um, in fact, this statement is true for any x value because once you have it for x um, between minus 1 and 1, well, if, if the absolute value of x is bigger than 1, uh, we know that this absolute value of sine can never be bigger than 1, right? Because sine always goes between minus 1 and 1. Um, so once you establish it for absolute value of x less than or equal to 1, you have it for all x. Um, now, this assumption here is useful because it puts us in the first quadrant, right? Well, first or fourth. Um, but let's focus on the first quadrant. So x is some first quadrant angle, right? And here's our unit circle. So we're going to draw the angle like this. Uh, now, one of the things we know is that the arc length, right, this arc of the circle that's spanned by this angle, x, is equal to x, right? That's the whole point of radian measure, is that this length is equal to the angle, okay? Um, we also know that the this height here, right, the y value is sine x. That's how sine is defined. Sine is defined as, as the height of this triangle that you get from that angle. Um, so it's, it's clear from the picture that this length is less than that length because this is sort of a straight line path going straight down, right, from that point to the x-axis. And this is a curved path that's, that's you know, it's taking a longer route. Um, so, so sine x is less than less than or equal to x when we're in the first quadrant. Uh, in the fourth quadrant, x is negative, sine x is negative. You've got to play around a little bit with sines to make sure that everything fits into place. But you can get yourself um, to this point. Okay? Uh, and the conclusion from this is that the limit as x goes to 0 of sine x is 0. Why? Well, because we know that, well, any absolute value is bigger than or equal to 0. Right? So the absolute value of sine x is in between 0 and x. Okay, and we know that the limit as x goes to 0 of 0, you know, that's 0. We know that the limit as x goes to 0 of the absolute value of x is 0, okay? And, and so now we know that the limit in the middle also must be 0, right? Um, and, and of course, there's the absolute value there, but if, if the absolute value of the limit is going to 0, or if the absolute value of the limit is 0, the limit itself must be 0, right? Um, you can deal with the absolute value. Um, if, if, if this feels a little bit awkward, you could always resort to an epsilon delta proof, right? Um, you could take delta equal to epsilon, and it's going to work, right? Because if the absolute value of x is less than delta, so is the absolute value of sine x, right? So with delta equal to epsilon, you get your result. Okay, so sine x has limit 0 as x goes to 0. We're going to see in the next video that a consequence of this is that, in fact, the limit of sine at any point can be done by direct substitution.